Uh, hi, I'm Larry O'Brien. I'm the uh, Global Marketing Manager for the Field Bus Foundation uh, here at our End User Seminar in Carson, California. Uh, with me here today is uh, Al Dewey uh, from Emerson Process Management. Uh, and Al's got a, a demo system here uh, uh, from Emerson and, and some other vendors here. And uh, Al, uh, maybe you can give us a brief uh, description of, uh, of what you got going on here this week. Sure, Larry, thank you. Uh, Al Dewey from Emerson. I represent Emerson on the uh, Field Bus Marketing Committee. And what we're demonstrating in this demo, uh, demonst uh, demo is the, the value of diagnostics with Foundation Field Bus, both to the operator and to the, uh, the instrument person. So uh, we have a, uh, a demo with a Delta V control system from Emerson. We have a Yokogawa device, some Rosemount device, Siemens, MTL, Fisher, a number of devices to show the interoperability. We also have a uh, intrinsically safe field bus handheld, which we'll be demonstrating as part of the demo. And what we want to show today is that these diagnostics are going to save you money. They're going to save you money in operations, and they're going to save you money in maintenance. And that's what we'll be showing today. So my demo is similar to, stand is similar to uh, the ones from uh, Rockville and, and Yokogawa. I have a host system and happens to be a Delta V. That's what I'll be demonstrating on. But a lot of these things are available in other hosts also. I have two segments. One of the segments is connected through this brick and it has a uh, uh, Yokogawa pH on it and a, a Rosemount transmitter and a Siemens transmitter and um, Fisher valve and an MTL uh, uh, dual power supply. And on the second segment, I have the uh, actually I have this and a uh, Rosemont pressure transmitter. So that's what I uh, that's the configuration of my uh, my demo. Uh, and I'm going to show you a lot of the displays you've seen today are, are, are things the engineer will use and the technician will use when they're setting up and figuring the system. That's that's good stuff. But really there's another guy that's involved in this and that's the plant operator. Okay, So I've got two hats today. I've got the plant operator hat and I've got the instrument guy hat. And I'm going to show you the instrument guy hat doesn't fit for some reason. <laughs> so I'm going to show you it kind of from a, a couple views here. And uh, what what's shown up there right now is uh, an asset management system display. And this is something the instrument guy would typically have in his shop. And it's basically things that he uses to tell if all the instruments are sick or not. The operator is, is interested in you know, keeping production going, but the instrument guy is making sure that all the stuff in this plant works. So let me just simulate a little, uh, just a very simple uh, alarm. And I'm going to break the uh, connection on this uh, <coughs> sensor, this temperature sensor. And this thing at the bottom there is called the alert monitor. And you'll notice right away an alert came up in that, uh, in that box telling the instrument guy, hey, something's wrong. Uh, I better take a look at that. So he can you know, just keep an eye on that during the day and click on that. And it'll bring up some more information about exactly what's going, uh, going on. So that'll, uh, <clears throat> that'll come up. Uh, it's coming up now. It's reading the uh, reading the parameters from the uh, from the device. And okay, so what we see here is uh oh something's going going wrong. I've got a it's like I've got a bad sensor. Uh, my second sensor looks like it's still good. Um, the difference between the two is bad because one of them's bad. So let's see what else I can find out here. I'll click on this fail button. And uh, sure enough, this tells exactly what happened. Sensor 1 has failed, um, and it has some recommended actions here. You'll verify those specific connections on the transmitter, um, and then verify the wiring, and then verify the sensor. So it, gives, it tells what's wrong, and then it shows you exactly on the device. Now, that may seem very simple and very obvious, but if you have hundreds of different types of devices in your plant, that can be very valuable information. So when the tech goes out to the field, he knows uh, he knows exactly what he needs to take out. He knows exactly how to connect it, and it's going to save him time. So now this happens to be a device that has 
hot backup and uh, in it. So, does the operator compa uh, c care about this alarm? What do you think? Does the no. operator care about this alarm? Probably no. Okay. Let's put his operator hat on. <laughs> and we're going to call up the operator display. He's fine. He's still got a temperature up there. It's displaying. And this is just a little excerpt like for an operator display. He's, he's fine. He doesn't need to get a big blaring alert or alarm. The instrument guy can take care of that because he's monitoring this in his AMS system. And the operator guy can be more concerned <coughs> about running the plan. So let's, uh, let's see what else will we do here. Let's look at uh, a different type of alarm. I'm going to go back into the AMS system. So I have to put my instrument guy hat back on. And, um, oops, where are we? Okay, here's, let's look at this MTL uh, device. I'm going to call that up. And that's, that's this device here. And it performs a couple functions. Number one, I'm feeding it with power, and it's a redundant power conditioner power supply for eight segments. And I'm only using two of those, segments one and segment eight. And it also has a diagnostic module on it that tells me the physical layer characteristics of those segments so we can see if there are any uh, you know, wiring or voltage uh, uh, problems like that. So let me, uh, I'm going to call up, and, and these results are actually reported on segment number eight. So I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at segment parameters here. Right here. So as you can see, it's telling me things like, what's the voltage on this segment? Well, it's reading 22.4 volts, so that's good. No problem there. It would tell us if that was too too low. Anybody remember what field bus segment voltages are supposed to be? Yeah, 18 about. Not 9 to 32 is the, the you know, 9 is a very low. Very few devices will do real well down there. But usually if you're in the 18 to 22 volts, you're, you're fine. And let's see, telling us things like uh, the link active scheduler is address 16, and its signal level is 756 millivolts. So the LAS is kind of an important device on the segment, and it seems to be healthy. Um, it's saying the lowest signal level is at device address 33 at only 726 millivolts. So you can see that kind of information. It's, it's kind of the electrical stuff about what's going on field bus. You can look at, uh, see if there's any noise, and this will tell you whether there's any noise on the segment. That all looks fine now. It'll tell you uh, uh, low frequency noise, like that's 60 or 120 cycle. In band noise, that's probably the most critical. Is there any noise in the uh, uh, frequency of the field bus signal, because that can raise havoc. It'll tell you what the highest low noise was uh, recently, uh, all those type of things. So. So that's good. Uh, segment alarms, it, it will tell you things like, is there a short to shield there? You know, the, a typical cable, field bus cable, has uh, you know, two, two wires for the field bus signal, a shield, and typically a safety ground. And obviously you don't want any of those shorting out, particularly to the shield. This will tell you if there's a problem there. So anyway, very useful. Uh, useful type of device. It has a lot more information, but I don't have time to go into that uh, <clears throat> right now. Okay, so let's bring our this guy back up. Now, um, let's put the uh, operator hat back on and go back to the uh, operator display and look at this valve. Okay, valves are, you know, very, you know, very mechanical devices, lots of problems, you know, I'm not saying they all fail, but if you're going to have problems, valves are a place that, that there's going to be a bigger frequency of those than a, than a transfer that just sets their measure. So, um, let me uh, take this valve, and I'm going to select it. Now, I actually have this in manual right now, because uh, uh, I don't have a closed loop, and I don't want it to wind up and things like that. So I have it in manual, and I'm going to just move it a few times here. 
you can hear it move, and this might be, you know, typically what an operator might do for, for various reasons. And um, okay, so maybe that maybe that represents what he's done over a week or so. He's moved the valve to various positions. Well, meanwhile, back in the instrument shop. The instrument guy sees another kind of alert come up. It says cycle count alert. So let's click on that and see what's going on there. You know, one of the you know, very simple things you can measure on a valve is how many times does it cycle? And you can you know, have a maintenance philosophy that if it's cycled, you know, every 10,000 cycles or something, you want to go off and do maintenance. So um, let's call it up and see what's going on there. <clears throat> so we'll call that up. Alerts. Travel history. Sure enough, there's a cycle count problem. So, you know, it's time for the maintenance guy to go out. You know, doesn't have to do it immediately, but, you know, he, that should be in his plan to go uh, look at that valve pretty soon. Is this something that the uh, operator needs to be concerned about right away? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Depends on the depends on the operators, you know, the philosophy of the plant. But typically, that's something maintenance guy. And, and the reason why I'm asking this is, one of the things we don't want to do with these alarms is just flood the operator with stuff that, that really isn't that important to him. But the instrument guy should be on top of that. So let's go back to the operator display. And sure enough, it didn't give him any kind of alert. That was that was an instrument guy alert. But let's do something a little bit more serious here. I am going to take this wrench, and I'm going to just shove it in this valve. And now I'm going to try to move the valve. This should get kind of... Oh, okay, move the valve, but it didn't move much because I got a wrench shoved in there. Is this something the operator should be concerned about? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and what what do you think we will see here? Travel alert. Okay. Travel alert. Actually, it showed up as a travel deviation. Okay. It it uh, is a travel deviation alarm. So. Um, he probably says, I've got some kind of a problem there. Uh, I better call my instrument guy. The, the instrument guy calls that up and says, um, yep, I'm seeing the same thing here. I'm seeing a treble deviation. I'll take a look at that. <clears throat> And got yeah, travel deviation alert. Well, looky here, the target's 15%, but it's stuck at 41%. So something, you know, something's going on there. So this is something the operator wants to know about. This something's probably got to be fixed right away. So we, we needed to alert him.